The topic that often comes up is Cecilia's DID, also known as Dissociative Identity Disorder. And quite a few times now I've been asked if I think that she legitimately has DID. Now, just to skip ahead to actually just give you the answer, I honestly don't believe that she has it. But I'm also not claiming to be uh, any professional in this area, even though I do... I know quite a lot on this topic. I know extensive details and I also know quite a few people who have DID. And when I compare what I know and the people who I know with what I experienced with Cecilia and of Cecilia, I am 99.9% .9 sure that she is just basically faking it. I mean, everything about her was a lie and is a lie. So. I guess why should this be any different? I mean, even in in the high court on the stand, Cecilia claims to only have recently been diagnosed with DID and only recently to have started seeing a psychiatrist. But yet, a decade ago, or a decade before being in the, the high court on the stand, she had claims that she had already been seeing a psychiatrist, that she had already been diagnosed with DID. So, <laughs> obviously, it's a lie. But now, suppose to help everyone on this topic, especially for those who don't really know what DID is, I'm going to just try and explain it in as much detail as I can, and then also give examples of the things that I witnessed or also did not witness with Cecilia. Now, to be honest, even though I know quite a lot on this topic, it is, it can be quite a, a mind twister. And even for the specialists in this field, they also don't regard themselves as specialists because they are still learning. And it's such a complex part of how the human brain is basically made up. And basically even these specialists are still trying to figure out how exactly this works how this exactly functions uh, within a person to start let me start off with basically saying what you have experienced in movies such as split uh, Sybil Frankie and Alice and various other movies that show DID that's that that is definitely well look to be honest it does portray aspects of did and the more that time goes on the movies are starting to portray certain truths or rather just facts to what causes did at least but in the way that did is portrayed especially in the movie split um that's not did that's just hollywood for you that is just a very very exaggerated form of a disorder and the same with uh, Sybil and Frankie and Alice and other movies and to be honest I've honestly yet to see a movie that has actually been legitimately based on how DID actually is portrayed in the normal world and in all honesty if someone had to make a movie on someone who had DID with without the exaggerations, without the special effects and everything else that Hollywood likes to use, the movie would be boring. DID people or people who have DID are everyday people. They are normal functioning people. They've just got something different about them. It's almost the same as a person with bipolar or a person with um, BPD or a P. TSD and all the other endless list of symptoms and labels that uh, that has been put onto people nowadays it's just I mean basically if you pass a person on the street or in the shops or you meet someone for the first time you don't instinctively see oh wait you know you're bipolar um, I, I think I, I actually feel like I'm going in circles trying to explain this but I mean okay take for example a person that's bipolar their mood swings go from one insane low to one insane high very often but yet that's pretty normal 
I mean, everyone's so used to bipolar people. The same with BPD and all the other different disorders. People are so used to all these different labels. But now, with DID coming up, and of course Hollywood taking hold of this whole new found, uh, whatever you would like to call it, the Hollywood goes and exaggerates the whole disorder and ultimately ends up making the person or people who have DID look like psychos and freaks and basically people you should stay away from, you know, because you never know what to expect. But then you also get people like Cecilia who claim to have DID and then they go out and kill people and commit various crimes claiming DID in the process and again people with DID are basically thrown into the box and categorized as some some type of psycho freak or killer or basically someone you should stay away from or run a mile from and it's honestly this is a very a frustrating topic for me I get I honestly get very worked up when I think about it because I know people who have legit, a legitimate DID and there is nothing dangerous about these people. There is nothing uh, insanely bizarre about them. I mean, they act and function and look like just everyday people, every, you know, people you pass on the streets. And unless you actually get to know these people quite a bit, or you spot the symptoms, and I'll get to the, the list of symptoms that can occur, you won't know. You don't know if this person has DID or not. And also, so often when it gets to people going to psychiatrists and psychologists and all of those <laughs> type, types of people, um, and it's also even docu uh, in documentaries that specialists like to first diagnose people with things like bipolar or schizophrenia or any other label before ultimately finally saying okay you actually do have DID and it's only it's mostly from what I know because they people are still trying to understand it um, these specialists are still trying to figure it out and because uh, things like bipolar and schizophrenia and all those other labels are basically the norm it's just you know quick and easy to let's just slap a label on you and call it call it a day basically and it's easy for the specialists to put these labels on people who have legitimate DID because some people who have DID uh, do display symptoms of various other disorders so, for example, um, PTSD, if you were diagnosed with this, but you actually have DID, uh, a person with DID <laughs> often undergoes or shows or suffers from extreme depression and stress. So, let's quickly slap a different label on it. The same with uh, changes in mood, the same with sensitivity to topics I mean the the list is endless I, I don't know all the different labels for all the different disorders and things that people uh, can be and the list of symptoms I just know is endless and there's always a, a label or a box or a category that you would ultimately belong to and a lot of the a lot of the different disorders basically also line up with one another. So, so you know, disorder one will have perhaps sleeping problems and headaches and stress. And disorder two will have stress and headaches. And disorder three will have sleeping problems and stress. You know, they, they all got some kind of common symptom going there. Uh, I hope you sort of at least get what I'm trying to say. Basically, I think if I had to sum up uh, my going in circles here, is that because DID is so complex and still being 
analyzed and still having specialists trying to figure out exactly how it works and all the ins and outs it's just far easier for a specialist to slap a different label on a person because the idea is just not that well known but oddly enough from uh, over a decade now of learning about DID and getting to know people who have DID my honest opinion and I stress opinion um, it's not a fact I know that there's many stated facts on the internet and everywhere else that you know the idea is exceptionally rare or it's three percent or it's this percent or whatever but in all honesty I've thought about this quite a lot and with the amount of people that I encountered who have DID it was actually ridiculous it felt to me that it was almost like one in every two or one in every three people had DID and this was mind baffling for me now I don't don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that these people definitely did have DID in terms of, you know, one, two, three, okay, you have DID, one, two, three, okay, you definitely have DID. These people, basically, I'm, I'm not a specialist, and I'm not pretending to be, I'm not pr professing to be, but these people did show very dominant signs. Uh, the signs that I knew of, and there's quite a lot, Uh, but just also, uh, don't if if anyone who's listening who has been diagnosed with bipolar or schizophrenia or anything of the sort, please don't go into a panic thinking that you've been misdiagnosed and you do actually have DID. Some people who uh, have bipolar do genuinely have just bipolar, um, and people who are schizophrenic are genuinely schizophrenic it's just I'm trying to say that the idea is still it's just too complex and so many there's not that many specialists in the world who know how DID works and how it functions and especially more so in countries like South Africa they it's not really known so when you go see a therapist or a psychiatrist or whoever, you are going to get a diagnosis that might not actually be the exact diagnosis that you should be getting. Okay, I honestly, I'm, I know I'm going in circles, yeah, but this topic honestly needs uh, a potential drawing, drawing room with a mind map uh, and a board that's probably as big as a room itself. And a good number of colored marker pens. But basically if you think about it. Now I'm trying to explain what the ID is. Basically if you think about it. Who nowadays has not been traumatized in some way or other. But now I'm talking about in early childhood. Now I, the, the, the experts say or well, the specialists say that. DID can only be formed by the age of seven and some say by the age of nine but either way at the age of by the age of seven or by the age of nine who can you actually honestly think of that has not been traumatized in some way and this can be any type of trauma uh, it can be any type of abuse and the more that the years go on the more I even discover how many types of abuse there is I mean, I was always used to knowing that there was physical abuse, sexual ab abuse, mental abuse, um, and emotional abuse. But I didn't know there was something such as intellectual abuse. And then you also get spiritual abuse. And this list just carries on. So on the, the general norm, and sad to say it would be the general norm, how many kids undergo emotional abuse? How many people even listening to this know of other people or have themselves undergone extreme emotional abuse, verbal or mental abuse, when they were just a child? I mean, I was told that 
even just extreme mental or emotional abuse could actually cause a person to get DID or to have DID created within themselves. It doesn't necessarily have to come from physical abuse or sexual abuse, even though those two types of abuse are the primary or more dominating factors for causing DID. I mean, just the, the simple topic, and it's actually honestly weird when I go onto Facebook and I scroll through uh, news feeds. How many people make comments on narcissists? How many people out there know a narcissist? It's actually honestly scary. Sometimes I, when I read the posts and I see the news feeds, I don't even want to step out the front door because I am honestly tired of narcissists. I've encountered so many, and that also includes Cecilia Stain. So how many people who were even raised by a narcissistic parent or a narcissistic family member or sibling even, you know, you would have endured some kind of abuse from that person. So aside from physical abuse and sexual abuse, how many of you actually know of a person who has not been abused in any other form? It's honestly scary that it's that rare. Unless it's just me. I mean, I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't think I could even count one or two people that I know that did not even go through any kind of extreme verbal or mental abuse or emotional abuse. So what I'm basically trying to say is that because abuse itself is so common, it, uh, and I hate saying that, and it's, I, I hate it. I mean, abuse is so common nowadays. And because it's so common, how many people then actually ended up with DID? And even from that, how many of those people were not even properly diagnosed and then also some are not di diagnosed so what i'm saying from this part as well is did is actually not that rare it's actually quite common so if you take this into account how many people you actually pass on the streets and in the shops and in the workplace and <laughs> people that you meet in your life people who are even family members and friends those people you know and people that you might have known all your life even, any of those people or even a couple of them could actually have the ID and they might have been misdiagnosed or they were never diagnosed. So how scary is DID really? I mean, <laughs> I'm sure if you had to find out that one of your friends that you had known practically your whole lifetime, uh, you know, has DID, you would be completely shocked. They seem so normal. So, I think this is, I think I'm harping on this point because I, I'm i over Hollywood making DIDs seem like some kind of scary disease at this point. Or some kind of, or that DID people are psycho serial killers. And then I'm even more over people like Cecilia Stain, and I know there's other people who have done this as well, who have claimed to have DID, and simply, you know, and, and committed crimes, and then the, the simple excuse is, it wasn't me, it was the other person, basically my other uh, DID part, or alter, uh, there's many different names for them, and funny enough, and I'm being sarcastic when I say that, Cecilia's favorite song, right in the beginning when I met her, was Shaggy's song, It Wasn't Me. And all these years later, when the investigation started, that song somehow just rang so true in my mind. Like, no wonder she liked that song. You know, she always thought everything was a joke. Uh, to go and do all these heinous crimes and manipulate and fool people, and then pretend to have DID, and then basically it wasn't her, so don't blame her, it was someone else. 
I mean, seriously. And I can't even begin to tell you how many times she sang that chorus line over and over and over again and still danced it and still had the different facial expressions, um, all of which I will add was sarcastic and cocky and it was, <sighs> yeah, she knew what she was doing and she was very, very proud of herself. But then again, it wasn't her. Now, let me jump a little here and tell you just some of the symptoms. The very, or at least the, the fairly common symptoms. One, though, I will definitely say, I mean, I do stand to be corrected. But as far as I know, every person that has DID suffers with extreme headaches. Especially if they have had one of their uh, alters or DID parts come to the surface um, or switch completely with them. I mean, I've seen so many documentaries and I've seen other videos also on YouTube and also with the people that I know. Headaches is a primary symptom and it's a very dominating symptom. And if I look back to Cecilia, I honestly can't recall her ever taking a headache tablet. And uh, if, if she did, at most it was maybe a two panada. And for a person with DID, two panadas is not going to do anything. And with the amount of times that Cecilia would switch, or should I rather say supposedly switch, which basically was a constant thing throughout the day. Um, on an estimate, she would easily switch five to ten times, if not more. So her head should technically and logically feel like it was exploding with pain. But yet there was no sign of a headache. I mean, she didn't even motion to frown that her head was sore or anything of the sort. So there's, there's no sign there. And that's a very, very dominant symptom for DID. Now, another symptom for DID, which is not exactly that common, but I have seen it happen on few occasions. It's a person's eye color will change. It'll, it might go from brown to green or, you know, blue to amber whatever colors their eye color will completely change like i said it's not a, a common symptom but it is one of them and i have seen it several times that's not anything i experienced with cecilia at all it's not a it's obviously not a ruling factor or ruling out factor should i say that she did not have did but i'm just adding it to the list Another fairly common uh, symptom or sign of a person having DID is that their handwriting will change. Now, I'm not talking about if you're in a rush and you're quickly uh, squiggling something down or you're being lazy or you're being incredibly neat and tidy and informal. Um, I'm not talking about that type of handwriting change. This is... A legitimate complete different type of person type of handwriting change uh, let me try explain so if you look at the different people you know in your life some will write in cursive some will write in all capitals some will be exceptionally messy some might even have very similar handwriting styles but the curve of a Y letter or the way they dot their I's and cross their T's are different. These things will be legitimately different. And I think the only way I'd honestly be able to explain the proper difference in handwriting is if I had to show you examples from a person who has DID. You can legitimately see that the handwriting was not made up uh, to be or to look like someone else's. You can legitimately see that this person was not just in a rush. 
it looks like it was from a completely different person. Another symptom for DID is basically I suppose you could just call it mood swings but then again it's also not because I've seen people with DID and they could be happy and suddenly they will switch and they will still be happy but I will also see uh, them go from a dramatic high or to a dramatic low or vice versa it kind of does look like bipolar and it sometimes can the extreme can happen within minutes but not exactly to a bipolar person's type of mood swing changes I mean for example if a bipolar I mean I, I know bipolar people and their mood swings change very rapidly and can change at the flick of a button so for example if a bipolar person has an extreme high and five minutes later it's an extreme low and five minutes later it's an extreme high again and you you get what i'm saying it's basically if you had to calculate it down to every five minutes up down up down like dramatic extremes but with a did person it'll basically be uh they could be at an extreme high Five minutes later, extreme low. Fifteen minutes later, midway uh, through, uh, sort of happy. Uh, an hour later, back to being super down. Uh, and then five minutes later, extremely happy. There is no set pattern. There is no set uh, dramatization. I don't know if I said that right. But... There is no exact extreme to which a person's mood will change when they switch. It doesn't drop or shoot up like a bipolar person's. And it's definitely not nearly as frequent. It's actually, uh, to be honest, it's, it doesn't really even, from the people that I know, it seems normal. It seems like a normal person's responses to things. Uh, it's gradual. It's not a just. It's not a sudden drop or a sudden high. It, it's just a, a gradual decline or a gradual incline. So again, there I should also add that they seem pretty normal. The ID, people with DID do seem and are pretty normal. But with Cecilia, had uh, yeah, this this is a bit of a hard one to narrow it down to because. She was only happy when she was getting her way and when she was trying to get even with somebody. So I wouldn't even write her off to being bipolar either. Uh, just plain narcissistic psychopath so far. Now I could honestly go on and on with quite a list of signs, symptoms and things like that to try give you examples or an idea of how to spot someone with DID but it's still not gonna cut it at the end of the day because a person with DID looks and functions just like everybody else I mean even to the point where a person with DID when they completely switch now this gets very hard for a lot of people to understand and to be honest it took me quite a while to wrap my mind around it as well and there's also a few different examples or scenarios that are used to try and explain this to people my first initial way of explaining switching to people is one person will be out uh, basically one person will be functioning, talking, uh, sitting, doing everyday things in their body, then one of their alters or one of their parts decides, well, it depends on the scenario and it depends on the person, but a, something could happen, um, a, stress, uh, a stressful scenario or abusive scenario could suddenly start happening. And one of the others, one of the other D 
PID parts or alters need to come out and rescue person one. Let's just call him person one. So the DID part basically knocks person one over the head, uh, metaphorically speaking or figuratively speaking. <laughs> I need to check my dictionary here. But basically uh, the DID part knocks person one out completely cold, unconscious. Um, and then the DID part comes in to play, basically. They start talking, they function in the body, they're the ones breathing, they're the ones moving around, They and they're also the ones then taking on the abusive scenario, or the stressful scenario, whatever's basically happening that they needed to rescue person one from. And once the scenario, uh, the stressful or abusive scenario is over, the DRD part is no longer needed to be out uh, or functioning in uh, using the body. And so they have to go back into, let's just call it the subconscious mind, or back, they need to go into the back of the mind again. So I suppose you could just bluntly say that they abruptly wake up person one, shove them back into consciousness, and person one more than likely will have a striking headache of note, and they will have absolutely no idea of the missing time of, of when the stressful or abusive scenario had happened. They have absolutely no clue uh, of anything that had happened during that time period that they were knocked out cold. No memories, um, sometimes no even physical symptoms. It gets extremely complex and this topic I could talk quite extensively on because it also highly fascinates me to be honest because I've seen some uh, very interesting things. But basically person one has absolutely no idea uh, of anything but the DID part that went back into the mind carries the memories, carries the trauma. Now, if you look at, or if I look back to Cecilia, Cecilia was always aware of every one of her abusive scenarios that she had apparently endured as a child, that she had apparently endured growing up, and of every scenario that she, that had happened around her, even during the time that I knew her and even afterwards. There was no time frame for a blanking out or a memory lapse or amnesia. Um, I will say that there were times that she did claim to not know uh, about when a certain scenario happened. And <laughs> funny enough, she was caught out because, and yet again, I caught her out by accident because it we would be talk. something would have happened, a dr dramatic scenario would have happened, she would have switched to someone else and then switched back again to her original self and then claim to not have known anything that had happened in this dramatic scenario. But then we end up having a conversation and later on she somehow seems to recall something about what had happened during the time that she was supposedly knocked out cold and in extensive detail and then I would usually respond with oh but I thought you didn't remember that oh but I thought you had switched to which I would always get a very awkward look on her face uh, or response from her basically I think the thoughts running through her mind was oops and then she quickly changes the topic or makes up some random excuse. So Cecilia never had a lapse of time. She never had a blackout period. She remembered her supposed trauma, should I say. And memory lapses for a person with DID is extremely common. Um, it's extremely, extremely common. I mean, when a person gets DID, or develops DID, 
at such a young age, the majority of their childhood can even be blank. It can be missing from their memory. It just depends to what extreme that they had uh, gone through trauma, to the extreme that they had, or the extreme number of times that they had switched. Uh, that's actually one of the symptoms I look for when I start to suspect that someone might have DID. Not everyone who goes through trauma, even if it's extreme, not everyone who goes through extreme trauma at such a young age will develop DID. And specialists don't know why some will and some won't. There are theories, but no one's actually come to any conclusive evidence, basically. But let me also just add that if you had never developed DID uh, by seven or nine years old of age, it's completely impossible for you to develop DID after that age, no matter what type of extreme trauma you go through. You'll instead uh, develop other things, uh, other disorders in order to cope. But to be able to fully develop DID, it has to have first started when you were extremely young. And sadly, with people who did develop DID at such a young age, they can continuously grow uh, their DID, or let me, let me be more specific, the number of DID parts or alters can increase. So, for example, if someone had, say for example, three DID parts, and they uh, encountered a scenario where they were raped in their teenage years. They could then end up with another, maybe four DID parts, having a total of seven. And then in their early 20s, they could have undergone physical abuse or emotional abuse or some kind of traumatic experience. Even so much as a... Uh, a car crash, a de uh, depending also how extreme it was, they could uh, have another additional two parts, another five parts, or another one part. There is no definition or there is no exact measurement on what will increase the quantity of parts that a DID person has or a person who has DID. But what I'm saying is if someone already has DID, they can still keep basically multiplying. And while I'm saying this, I know some people are thinking, oh my gosh, like, wow. And hold on, like, some people are probably freaking out. There's a lot of responses uh, that I've encountered from other people when talking about this topic. But like I said, these people, People who have DID, who legitimately have DID, you probably know people, you more than likely know at least one person in your life who has DID, yet you would never suspect them of being able to harm a fly. So there's nothing to honestly to be scared about. These are just incredibly wounded people who have gone through incredibly devastating things since they were very young. And even if they end up multiplying with more DID parts later in their lives or throughout their lives, it is still possible for these people to find healing or to go through counseling or something of that sort to then start reducing the number of parts within themselves. Although it's also been said that for a DID person to be completely healed, it's impossible. But... I can tell you it's not. It is possible for a DID person to heal of having DID. It is just exceptionally rare because, I mean, face it, there is so much trauma, uh, there is so much drama, there is so much stress that everyone faces every single day. So it's a constant wage of war. And then fighting back to try and heal current scenarios plus past scenarios if you get what I'm trying to say. 
it's like trying to conquer a mountain it's trying to fight a giant it's not impossible but it is extremely hard it's extremely tough and what I wanted to add with the multiplying of DID parts <laughs> now to the degree that a person goes through trauma so this can vary on the extremity of the trauma the number of times the same type of trauma happened and the variations of different types of trauma that this person went through that will multiply the DID parts inside of a person I was told that the average person who has DID has about 10 DID parts. I don't know if that's true or not. And like I said, specialists are still learning as well. But in extreme cases, and now this is going into reference with Cecilia's supposed, well, Cecilia's claims for her supposed occult upbringing and supposed abuse that she went through. People who have gone through and sadly, I know there's people, so many people out there who have been through extreme types of abuse uh, and different variations and non-stop. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's just stories are coming to mind now. And these people end up with so many DID parts and they are specialists who, I, I know the... Originally, when I first found out about DID, it was first classified as, well, first put into two categories, DID and then SRA, SRA DID, basically being Satanic Ritual Abuse DID, which is what Cecilia claimed to have. And now for SRA DID, it didn't necessarily have to be anything occult related. But it just had to be classified as extreme abuse like you would have received from an occult practice so you know in order to be labeled with sra did but now with cecilia of course her claims were that she was abused because well from the occult because she was raised into the occult so the abuse was occult like it was extreme uh, sadistic twisted basically everything that Cecilia is I should just add so the number of parts now Rhea made a there were quite a few times Rhea would check how many parts Cecilia would have um, and the numbers were always high I'm talking about in the hundreds and at one part uh, oh, sorry, at one point, Cecilia claimed to have over 800 and something DID parts. And I think that was into the third year of me knowing her. And yes, each one had names, personality types, ages, and so on. I can only just imagine, or at least I would think that it would be extremely tiring to act out over 800 different personalities and still remember uh, who is what age and who uses what type of words or way of speaking and to keep basically in line with a, a pretend or a false fully formed identity going here. So basically what I'm trying to say is with Cecilia's DID part, Anya. Anya was supposed to be three years old. She was supposed to be the embodiment of everything that was good within Cecilia, uh, or that used to be good within Cecilia. And Anya could never do anything bad, anything wrong. She was just supposed to be this completely pure little girl um, who was constantly victimized and she was extremely caring but after about three or four years of knowing Cecilia the whole characterization or Anya's character 
was definitely not the way it was originally portrayed. Anya suddenly had a temper. Anya was suddenly lying. Anya was doing things that were completely out of character for who she was supposed to be. And this was very similar to Cecilia's other fake uh, DID parts. Uh, Akisha. Now, Akisha was supposed to be, or should I rather say, the way you're supposed to pronounce the name is Akasha, which is supposed to mean Queen of the Damned. And Akasha was apparently created or split off from Cecilia during an occult ritual. Basically, Cecilia was abused and she split. So Akasha was formed as a DID part and the sole existence or sole reason for Akasha's existence was to keep Cecilia in line with the occult. So if Cecilia ever decided to leave the occult, Akasha had to basically knock Cecilia out cold and take over where she would be fully dedicated to the occult and there would be no interruption or Cecilia ne never leaving the occult. I can only imagine what some of you must be thinking right now. But also, Akasha, her personality was not the same by the second, third and fourth year. Too many identities to be making up here, basically. To keep track of who is who in this zoo, basically, because it was basically a zoo. Um, it was just a nightmare. There were so many names. And I know Rhea would even, at some points, write down the names and basically bullet points of ages and roles for why they were there and so on. And now with uh i mean i can i can list quite a few parts the id parts names that i remember from cecilia but <laughs> why bother none of them really existed they were all just made up but they were even extreme the did parts were even as extreme as so being supposed vampires but brace yourself for the next one it gets even worse because not only that, and this is also what makes me extremely angry, where people pretend to have DID and then they make up the most bizarre, weird things that become basically demonic. Uh, and it scares the rest of the world off, uh, thinking that people with DID are these freaks or people that you need to run from. Meantime, DID people become even more vulnerable and even more scared to admit that they have DID because, well, they're going to basically experience even more trauma because now they've been rejected even more. I mean, they were abused all their lives. So, you know, <laughs> it wasn't their fault that they got DID. But now because they were abused and because they developed DID, they are now further subjected to being categorized as evil psychos. This really doesn't sound fair now, does it? But this is what makes me even more angry with Cecilia. Because not only did Cecilia claim that she herself could change, fully transform into a wolf and a werewolf during certain times, uh, and... Anya, as well, could fully change into a wolf or werewolf at certain times, bearing in mind that Anya would always be a white wolf and Cecilia was more of, of a brownish wolf. This, these were the descriptions that we were given, and photos as well, sadly. But not only that, like I said, then there were DID parts, or supposed DID parts, that were vampires. And I suppose this sh uh, it shouldn't surprise me when Cecilia talked about how much she loved the taste of blood. 
and how much she well she would even describe what blood tastes like and how she craves it because when I, in that audio I spoke about where she drew her own blood and the the one little balloon of blood burst in her mouth and she didn't flinch I should have known um, but dare I even ask even further if she actually used to drink blood because I honestly don't want to know but so she had apparent DID parts that were apparently vampires and yes they did supposedly switch and come out in front of me and Rhea and the others in the group and you had to close <laughs> you had to close the curtains and they had to stay in the dark because otherwise their skin would burn um and yes i laugh because wow um but like i said it still gets worse okay so i hope you're ready for this next one um like i said it gets worse in cecilia's or within cecilia's did parts um, one of these DID parts who had been in existence for a very long time and as far as memory serves uh, we were told since Cecilia this DID part existed since Cecilia was very young it was Anya's pet yes I said pet but it was not your average pet it was something like a jaguar or a black panther. I just know it was this big black cat type of animal. Um, that's what it was described to be. And it was extremely protective of Anya and Cecilia and extremely vicious. And this was a functioning, supposed functioning DID part. And I'm glad I wasn't there for this that day but I know Rhea experienced this because I heard about it and Rhea still talked about it in front of me uh, Cecilia switched to this animal I can't remember its name and Cecilia was on all fours hissing and growling and scratching at the floor and wanting to attack Rhea unfortunately I am not joking this is a fact. This is true. This is the extreme that Cecilia went to in making up her DID parts. Um, how twisted, how distorted, and now what is... I mean, I know in the movie Split, when... The, the man kept switching to his different DID parts in extreme ways where the clothing would change and the mannerisms would change. Uh, I was basically used to that portraying of DID in movies and exceptionally exaggerated because that's definitely not how it happens. But in the end of the movie Split, this man also then develops into this demon-like creature. And... I just know I was furious at that point because not only does it portray DID to the world as something demonic and evil, I had also had a first-hand encounter with a person who did this kind of thing as well in portraying DID as being... <sighs> yeah, it's not. DID is not like that. I know I'm going to more than likely touch on or talk again about the this whole DID topic with Cecilia because it was a non-stop 24-7 topic with her but also according to her she only recently found out she had DID uh, I hope <laughs> Uh, and I'm sarcastically saying this, I hope that all her parts know that she only recently found out that they existed. So, uh, if I could plug a chord into my brain and play the memories, the world would be shocked. More than it already is right now. 
And I'm sure that China or Russia or one of those countries must have developed some kind of technology to be able to do this. And if they have, sign me up because I would love, I would honestly like to show the world the things that I had experienced and seen in this whole scenario because talking about it, even to me, it feels surreal. But to actually, so I can only imagine how everyone else must feel, but to actually see it in front of you, so if it had to be pulled from my mind or my memories and portrayed on a screen, yeah, please sign me up. I would like people to see the insanity that we all lived through and the bizarreness and, and everything. It was just too much. I think, I honestly think that Cecilia took every movie that she had ever seen in her lifetime and just took all the sick, sadistic and twisted parts of those movies and basically made it her life and her life's ambitions as well. And before I end this audio now, I just want to say one last thing about DID for now. When DID is formed or developed within a child, its sole purpose and its only purpose is there to save the child. Because if that child did not develop DID in that moment, they would have died. So those DID parts are rescuers. They are lifesavers. Um, people who have DID, yes, I know that they find it exceptionally frustrating at times, especially when it comes to headaches and memory lapses, more so the headaches. But I know at the same time, they have a, a profound gratitude to their parts or to their DID alters because if they were not there, if they were not formed, this person would not have survived the abuse or the trauma that they went through at the young age that they went through it. So even though to the world DID is still basically a new thing that is being uh, vocalized or displayed or however you want to put it, it's been around for countless years and it's not twisted, it's not sick, it's not something to be scared of and I can guarantee you that you know someone, you know at least one person who has it and like I said earlier, you would more than likely also not think that this person could harm a fly. DID people are... <sighs> With a lot of the DID people I know, they are actually very gentle-natured people. Um, they're not some, something or someone to be scared of. They are just exceptionally wounded people with a past or pieces of their past that they don't recall. And yes, they've got issues. Everybody's got issues. I mean, everybody suffers with something. It's either stress, depression, sleeping problems, headaches insomnia, the list goes on. So a DID person shares symptoms just like every other person. It's just different. And like I said, if these people didn't develop DID in their early years, when they they were desperate because it was basically, you know, they needed an extreme form of an, an, an escape. So developing DID saved them. And if it wasn't for their DID parts, that person wouldn't be around today. And I know some people find DID fascinating. Some raise eyebrows. Um, I haven't met anyone that's actually scared of DID, um, but many that are ignorant of DID. But even though it's highly fascinating as well, um, it's, it's a life-saving thing that was developed in the person. And I've even heard people say that it was God-given, you know, it was God-saving grace to save the child when they ultimately needed it at that point, because without it, they wouldn't have survived. They wouldn't be around.
and even though that these DID parts still exist within these people uh, to later years in their lives, those DID parts are there still to help. Their sole role and their sole purpose is to be helpers, to be rescuers, not to be catastrophic or destructive. That's not the role of a DID part. Um, I hope it's making some kind of sense. But DID is actually a life-saving gift. And not some kind of excuse that someone can pretend or use uh, in order to do such heinous things 